Hello, and welcome back into um, the studio. Well, actually, to the couch this week. I am going to begin a new embroidery project inspired by another part of the Mystical Stitches book. I'm going to work on creating this night moth on a cyanotype embroidery background. So if you would like to check that out, stick with me. First, I prepared muslin with um, cyanotype and then I exposed it under a UV light. I am rinsing it in a little water with hydrogen peroxide to set the dye. And I created that moon by simply using a piece of acetate and tracing it um, on my computer and coloring it in with Sharpie, very high tech. Um, and then I love that I got this beautiful moon in the background. I had used some fake ferns and a little piece off of a plant in my studio to create the rest of the base of my um, background here on the muslin and then I am just sketching out the shape of the moth as I see it kind of referencing the book picture there um, just so I have some lines to fill in and um, that is going to be the main feature i'm setting it up there near the moon kind of flying in between the frame of the exposed ferns in the background and then once i have my sketch set the way i want it i am going to um, start choosing different embroidery floss sort of based on a little bit referencing that example there but then also choosing colors that I like with my blue background so I want something that sort of contrasts so I'm going to go with um, yellows and a uh, little bit of like oranges because they look nice and they are the uh, contrasting colors to the blue there. So I think they'll stick out. I'm also including brown because I really did like that a lot. The moth in the book had all of the brown body and that's very true to moths. Although you can do, you know, really whatever you want. So I just root through my very disorganized bin and choose things that I like until I am happy with um, having an assortment of colors. And then I am going to begin filling in my moth using satin stitches. So I had a little difficulty with the camera angles in this video and you really couldn't see me setting the body in, but basically all I did was use a satin stitch, um, which is a filler stitch, and um, fill in the sketch that I had made. So I used my lines um, as a reference and it's not exactly, it doesn't have to be exactly, um, you know, kind of like drawing with our our thread here so again like the sketch is just to help guide you as you work and then for the wings I am beginning again with the satin stitch and I'm going to do um, a few rows with this like light orange color and I'm doing them very close to the body there to create a little separation between the brown and um, give the rings a little, give the wings a little dimension. And I'm not worrying if I'm getting it in a straight line. I'm actually purposefully making it a little bit longer and a little bit shorter in different areas to give movement to the wings. So that part I'm just haha winging it. And then I tried to roughly repeat um, and mirror what I had done on the right side on the left side but they're not exact because again I didn't draw this part out I don't think that it needs to have perfect symmetry um, I just wanted it to you know be similar because a moth true to life would have a somewhat mirror image on the opposite side I'm 
once I was done with that, I did a little row of brown and a little row of peach. I added some purple um, circles in the center and I did some lower wings with a like a caramel color. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really capture a lot of that, but it was the same satin stitch over and over again, um, just kind of wiggling the movement of the um, threads back and forth and then filling in the shape that I had drawn. And here I'm going to add a few details of vines and organic shapes in the forefront um, in front of the ferns, which I think create like a really great blocking uh, for that so they can stand out. So a lot of the work and the heavy weight of this canvas is done by the exposed images. And then you can play just with a few elements of stitching. And that's why we'll be doing this um, for an upcoming class because um, you know, you don't have to be a great stitcher or have the world's most impatience to add a few stitches and practice a few different embroidery techniques and really fill this canvas up um, and make it um, really darling and unique. So here I'm using chain stitch and a lovely viewer pointed out to me that I had called the split stitch a chain stitch before. Um, so I want to be sure to correct myself. The chain stitch is um, coming up from the back and then going in right next to that and catching a loop of fabric before you move or loop of floss before you move on to the next um, one. And then they're all interconnected, kind of like little lazy daisy petals all connected together. Um, and certainly there's a good example of that in that Mystical Stitches book if you have that and you want to reference exactly how to make the chain stitch and then the split stitch is different because you come up in between all of the threads and then go down so thank you to that person for pointing it out sometimes you just get something in your head wrong and then you keep talking about it um, you know incorrectly so it's great to be um, making sure that we're being accurate uh, when describing things so I hope you'll forgive that little error but here I'm just making a row of I don't know some kind of little vine that comes up in the front using the chain stitch in a bright green thread I've split all of my threads today into three I believe just to make them a little bit more fine but um, you can certainly use whatever number of thread you care to um, if you use more threads you'll get a much thicker line if you use fewer threads you will get a much finer line so you have to kind of experiment with that for the look that you are going for but then I'm going to finish this one off and um, move on to adding another one I add about four different vines but you can see my little chain stitch there nice and delicate There's my moth all finished with a satin stitch. And my puppy is barking at the neighbors. And here I am doing another um, little fern stitch along. I think I added a few extra little chains along the edges of that chain stitched central stem just to make it have a few leaves like a little tiny fern would. And here I am using a simple back stitch to add another different kind of little vining element working up on this side. And I'm kind of trying to keep in mind of framing my moth. So that's my central feature element. Not only did I put it in the center with the moon um, and used those ferns to to create that focal point. I'm also trying to do that with my secondary stitched elements as well. So creating the vines up on either side following where the ferns are so that it's framing out my little moth. And I'm just doing a really simple back stitch here with a green, a darker green floss. I'm trying to get a bunch of varieties of greens in here. And honestly, I was using some things that were just left over from my previous embroidery projects from the garden journal and such so I didn't have to split all those threads.
And then once I got the whole central stem on that one, I went back through and added a few little um, backstitched branches off of that as well. And I believe a few little leaf spots um, or textures of leaf spots. And I wanted to keep these kind of sparse and open. Again, this is a sample for a class that I will be doing. And you only have a couple of hours to come and work on your project. So I didn't want to make my sample overly complicated either. Of course, you could sit and spend as much time as you want on something like this. Um, but I think it's also important to note that just some really simple textures can be quite beautiful. And then I worked on another dark green branch on the opposite side. So again, kind of bouncing around the brighter greens and the darker greens across my canvas and then keeping in mind that I'm trying to maintain that like V frame around my central uh, moth element. And so for this one, I believe I used the stem stitch. And then I am just creating a couple of small little branches off of the side of that as well. And adding kind of like a, a small little spray of like little leaves, but only with singular stitches. So more of like a fan shape stitch um, to give those textures there. And then at the top of this one, I am using the Lazy Daisy stitch to create a little golden flower at the top. So I'm coming up through the back and I am going down right next to it. And then I am catching the loop at the top to hold it in a loop shape to create like a little uh, flower petal look and then I go back through the center of each of those loops with a single long stitch just to sort of fill it in with a bit more color and I create just three of these small flowers one is dead on like that you can see the front of it and that's the one I'm working on right now the one at the top is sort of turned to the side facing the moon and then I do a really small one that's sort of more like a bud off to the far right side just to have a couple of pops of that lighter yellow but I didn't want it to be too much about the flowers or taking away from all the work I had done on my moth and then for this last shape in the center, I'm creating kind of like a feather stitch in a row um, down through the center to get a little bit of that fern look. And so I'm coming up, and I'm sorry you can't really see too well what I'm doing, but I'm coming up through and then sort of going down in at an angle and catching my thread there. To hold it in like a cascading V and then I do the opposite thing like going the other direction and trying to get them um, to meet down a central spine sort of like a fern would and I have to tell you working from one direction to the other it was a little bit of mind trickery and I had to go back and unpick this one once because I couldn't get it running correctly but, um, you know, sometimes you have to do that, just sort of playing with the thread and not being afraid to pick things out. You know, that's my ultimate philosophy is that there's a thread picker for a reason. You don't need to, um, know what you're doing the first time. It's fun to just experiment. And that's why I say like loosely based on the feather stitch, cause I kind of feel like I partially made this one up. <laughs> But it turns out very cute in the end. And then on that little sparse branch that I made off to the left, I'm creating the teeniest little French knots. And then I'm adding two little V stitches to the top of it. So it looks some kind of like tiny bud or tiny berry. And I'm doing that in like a 
darker coral color just to bring a little bit of the colors of the moth through and to have another pop of color on that side. So I'm kind of balancing not only using like a brighter green and a darker green to frame out my moth, but then also little pops of color um, and little flower elements on either side to provide additional balance around my, my central feature. And a very big welcome to all of my new subscribers over the past couple of months. I sincerely appreciate having you all along with me. I hope that you are enjoying these embroidery videos and finding lots of inspiration. Um, I will be coming out with a few uh, quilting videos again soon. I had been feeling rather under the weather most of February, and then I had to also teach on top of that. I feel so bad for the kids having to listen to me um, gargle rocks in the back of my throat, but I thought I would spare you. So hopefully I will get back to a more regular posting schedule now that I'm feeling a lot better. But that's why I did a lot of these um, videos sitting on my couch with my puppy because um, it just was a, like a lot less difficult to be motivated to, to sit on the couch and stitch something beautiful. And then I will be doing this, like I said, as I have a few classes coming up where I will be showing, um, you know, working with people to create their own cyanotype background and then adding, you know, some fun embroidery elements because I think it's really accessible for people who maybe don't stitch that often. Or even if you do, just having a little bit of fun with working on a background that you created and thinking of a total composition so creating like the base foundation and then layering other elements on top of it um i don't know i just think there's lots of possibility for creativity there and um it's a really fun opportunity for a class for a lot of people so that will be coming up i have several of those in april and may and again this was a sample i also started working on Another sample that hopefully I will finish and then um, share that with you as well. That one features a spider web. I can't do nothing with you. And then this is all I have done. I'm going to complete it. Um, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It's sweet. Um, I'm going to pull it off of the hoop and put it, um, like frame it, but I'm really happy with the total composition overall. Again, very simple elements. Cyanotype dye is very easy to work with. You can order it on Amazon and, um, I just, that's a plain piece of muslin turned into a gorgeous work of art in my opinion in just a couple of hours. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell and follow along. And I'll see you real soon.